Hello, welcome to this TTK tutorial. So in this video I'm going to show you how to reproduce one of the examples shown in the gallery section of the TTK website. So let's go there. Here? And in particular I will show you how to reproduce uh, the second built-in example, which is right here, showing uh, fiber surfaces. So for this you'll need to open a terminal like I did here. And I will assume that you downloaded and decompressed the TDK source code and data tarballs to uh, this directory here, TDK, there. And of course, that you successfully installed TDK. So one important note here, for this demo to work, you want to make sure that you patch the private source tree, which is the step four of the installation instructions. The demo will not uh, work otherwise. Okay, so, We'll go to the uh, TTK data directory and to uh, launch this demo, we'll type the following command harview state states built in example 2. And we uh, hit the key enter. So, one of the components um, of TTK that is used in this demo is actually time consuming, so this will take a bit of time. Okay, and uh, here we are. So what we see in this demo is a um, data set from uh, molecular chemistry. And this represents uh, a molecule that is called the ethan diol. All right, so uh, the data is provided with two scalar fields. One, which is the, electron de the logarithm of the electron density, uh, which actually uh, uh, denotes uh, the probability of finding an electron in space. And the other one is the Bridges gradient, which is a function um, that the chemists uh, look at to understand uh, the relation of the, um, the chemical interactions in uh, such systems. Okay, what we see up top here is the continuous scatter plot. This is uh, the projection of the data in the range. So here the x-axis corresponds to uh, the first function, the electron density and the y-axis to the second, the radius gradient. And here, um, the shade of color from blue to green indicate uh, the portion of the volume that project to a, a specific uh, area in the plot. So this can be understood as a sort of uh, two-dimensional histogram. Okay, so as you can see, this histogram has uh, some sort of features that appear in there, and this is uh, kind of interesting. Because what the chemists know is that the um, electron density and the radius gradient are exponentially related in areas of space where there is no chemical interaction. So here I consider the logarithm of both functions, which means that in um, regions where there is no chemical interactions, the data will tend to project on this diagonal because the two functions will be um, linearly um, dependent. So what it means is that all the uh, features of the plot, which are off the diagonal, correspond to some uh, chemical, some form of chemical interaction somehow. So one thing that can be done is to plot the uh, isosurfaces, the level sets of those two functions, which we did here in dark gray for the electron density, to, uh, and that denotes the region in dark gray uh, corresponding to the atoms. And uh, we can also look at a level set of the radius gradient in blue, which denotes the interaction between these atoms. And here we can see uh, a covalent interaction and to some extent a little non-covalent interaction here. So if we uh, consider this, these level sets in the histogram, these actually project to uh, axis-align uh, segments. 
So here the blue surface corresponds to all the points that project at a given uh, y coordinate in this plot. And all the dark green, the dark gray points correspond to all those points that project to a um, vertical line at a constant uh, x coordinate. Okay. So traditionally people look at these uh, level sets, but the problem here is that it, it is hard to make the difference between the types of atoms and the types of interactions. So a natural way to proceed is to actually look at the features of the uh, uh, continuous scatter plot of the histogram. And here uh, what we show are fiber surfaces. So you know, the user provided some strokes here in color. And the fiber surfaces are the pre-images of these strokes. So basically the user uh, highlights the regions he's interested in, interested in, in the um, 2D histogram. And the fiber surfaces allows us to uh, view them, view the corresponding regions in 3D. Okay, so now I will show you how to uh, generate this example from scratch. Okay, so I will close this. And uh, I will um, clear this and say, and launch the following command built in example 2.pti. And there we go. I will first split the screen in two here, and I will load uh, the 3D data at the bottom. Okay. So to have uh, a notion of context, I will first show a uh, level set of the row function here. And actually, I will just put it in transparent, like this. All right. So usually what people are looking at are uh, level sets of these two functions. So let's go for contour. Look row, let's say 1.57. Okay, and we'll call it this in uh, dark and black. Okay. So to uh, trigger some processing like I did for the level sets here, you go into filters and you can have access by alphabetical order to all of the features that are available in TTK and PowerView. TTK features here are organized in these menus or alternatively you can uh, use the search uh, window which I did here and in particular you can use the keystroke control and space to make this uh, search menu pop up real quick. So um, in, in practice this is faster to proceed this way. So I will do it again and we'll extract some contours on the data here. And this time I will use the other function, uh, the reduce gradient. I will use this value here. Okay, and I will put this in color like this, let's say. Perfect. So now we have those isosurfaces that uh, show um, the chemical interactions between the atoms. Okay. So now we can have a look at the 2D plot, and for this we'll select the input data, and uh, we'll click on the view at the top and click on 2D, and then we'll search for the continuous uh, scatter plot uh, TDK filter. And here we'll use uh, row as the x axis and s as the y axis. And here we'll use a uh, downsampled uh, histogram, otherwise, this will take some time to compute. Okay, let's go. All right, and this is finished. So now we can have a look at the density field here. And we can edit the color map. In particular, we want to use a log scale. So for some reason, Harvey is complaining about this. But let's uh, tune the color map a bit. Here, I'll do something with that effect. Perfect. All right. Okay. 
So now we want to understand where those isosurfaces project onto the plot. So for this, we'll select them. We'll select this one, for instance, and we'll say uh, project from field and reload. We'll say that the first component. Oh, let me pull that back here. Don't forget to check the box compute scalars on the contours or this one as well. Compute scalars. And there we go. So now we'll take uh, this isosurface and we'll project it to the plot with project from field. And here, for the first component, we'll use row, and for the second, uh, S. So row here is the electron density, and S is the reduced gradient. There we go. Next, we extract the edges of this set here. And there we are. We can see uh, the straight line that corresponds to the surface. We can put a tube here to uh, better see it. Let's put three, like this, okay, two. Let's put this in black. All right. Now we'll do the same with the isosurface of the reduced gradient. We'll take this one and we'll click on this view because this is where we want the projection to end up. Project. We select the right coordinates to project. There we go. We extract the edges like this and then we extract the tube like that. Okay. And uh, put this like this, and we put the right color. And there we go. Perfect. So now we want we have finished the isosurface based visualization. We want to uh, see the actual fiber surfaces. So we'll split this view in two here, and uh, we'll make this appear. Um, for convenience, you may want to uh, make sure that the two views agrees, agree in terms of camera. So you do right click, link camera, and you click on the other view here. There we go. We want to display this guy as well. Be transparent. Okay. And now, now we'll proceed uh, to the actual fiber surface extraction. So for this, we'll zoom in some region of the 2D plot where we want to extract a feature. And we'll click on this button here, Interactive Select Points On. All right. We say, well, I want these polygon that I draw with those points. And then I do Extract Selection. If I type Selection, this will appear here. OK. Apply. And then these, at the result of extracting those four points that I drew here. So from this, I will do Range Polygon to um, actually extract a polygon out of those points. Okay, now I can display the continuous scatter plot again. And here is the polygon that I drew with those four points. We can uh, display a tube for this one, uh, but for this we need to convert first to a surface representation, like this, and then we'll put a tube, okay? This size, and we'll give it a particular color like this one. Okay, so now we have created this polygon in the 2D histogram and we'll compute the corresponding fiber surface in 3D. For this we'll click on this view here and uh, we'll search for fiber surface and we'll say that the uh, input 3D geometry, the input domain, is actually the input data and the range polygon that we want to consider is the range polygon we extracted here. Okay, let's click OK. And here we want to uh, specify the X and Y coordinates. Uh, we want to say which field of the data should be considered as X and Y. So, or U and V if you prefer. We click here. We want to make sure that those two agree. And we click on apply. And here you have this surface, which is a composed of the set of points that live on this curve that I drew in green. And we'll put it in green too. Here. Okay, now let's look at other features in the scatter plot. Here, we'll try to extract some uh, um, some uh, covalent bounds. So here, I will click here, like this, like that, selection, 
five. Now I will do um, range polygon again at five. And here, here is the polygon that we drew. I will transform this into a surface and then into a tube. All right, with the right size. And let's put this guy in dark blue like this. Okay, let's have a look at the continuous cattle plot. Okay, so now we want to find out uh, how those features look like in 3D. So we click on the 3D view. We click on the wrench polygon 2, which is the one we drew. And we go for fiber surface. The input domain is still uh, the data that we had in the input. And the wrench polygon this time is the second one here. Again, we want to make sure uh, that those values are properly set and that they agree with each other. Okay, and we click on apply. Here, you've got the surface uh, that corresponds to this curve that I drew here. And uh, we can put that in dark blue as well. All right. Now, uh, we can have a look at those features which are above the, di the diagonal. So what's interesting here is that the features of the plot below the diagonal seem to uh, correspond to um, covalent interaction on one hand here and non-covalent interaction on the other end here with this kind of uh, shape in green. So now what is happening above the diagonal uh, as a matter of fact seems to correspond to uh, the heavy atoms. So let's go in there and select those features. Here, selection, range, polygon, and there we go. Then we take uh, the third rich polygon, we extract surface out of it, and then a two. We want this to be bigger, like this, and we'll give it a color like this guy. Perfect. And then we want to see the corresponding fiber surface in 3D. So let's click on the range polygon and call fiber surface. The input domain is still the input data and the range polygon is the last one we created. Here we set the coordinates right and apply. And there you have um, the points that correspond to this curve. Let's put them with the same color. And finally, let's have a look at this feature up top. So here, we click on this guy and say this, this, and this. Uh, select, range, and there we go. So we want to uh, display this again. Take the range, surface, tube, make them bigger like this, and give it a specific color, like this guy, for instance. All right. Okay. Now we want to have a look at what corresponds to in 3D. So we'll click on the range polygon, and we'll call fiber surface on the input data, and the range polygon is the last one we created here. We make sure the coordinates correspond here and there. And we click on apply. There we go. And we put a uh, color like this. All right, so what's interesting here with the fiber surfaces is that um, basically you can very easily disambiguate between uh, covalent and non-covalent bounds here in this example and between the two types of uh, heavy atoms by just looking at the features of the 2D circuit, which is uh, pretty neat. And the fiber surface here will actually um, show you uh, what those features correspond to in 3D. Okay, so now uh, we can crop uh, the rest of the scatter plot to only see exactly the point where it projects. So for this, we use a threshold, and we'll threshold with this uh, field value point mask, and we'll take all those points that project into the plot. And here, you have exactly uh, the scatter plot that we had before, we can add some axis, let's say here, log row, and here, log s, apply. Okay, and there we go. 
here we have reproduced um, the uh, built-in demo number two. And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.